Hello and welcome. My name is Teresa. And believe it or not, full disclosure, this is my fourth time trying to do this video for you. And instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to just pick up where we stopped because the, the camera moved. Anyhow, let's get started. What I'm going to show you is how I created this gift card holder. And what inspired it was I was on YouTube and I came across a channel where they did origami gift wrapping. You know, you put your box down on the gift wrap and you start all these folds. And when you're done, you have several fold lines and you can put a card or your gift tag inside. And I thought, wow, that's a cool idea. Now I know there's lots of different um, tutorials out there as to how to make gift card holders. I have not seen one like this. So hopefully this is new to you as well. Now this is my mock-up version. Again, not my first attempt. I think this was my seventh attempt at getting this right. Some of them just require a little bit more work than other ones, but I liked it a lot. And um, let me just show you the card first before we resume and I catch you up to where I lost the video. Um, the, the gift card goes right in there. I'm not going to show you the name of it, but look, after you take out the gift card, you still have this beautiful greeting card that you can keep out the whole season. And again, let's go ahead and put that in there. See, it just tucks right in. Isn't that nice? I love it. Now, I'm going to catch you up to speed as to where I left off in this process. For this version of the card, I am using the Evening Evergreen. Disregard this white paper. It's because of the light ring. It really reflects high on here, and I want to save your eyes. So this is a piece of the Evening Evergreen cardstock. It measures five and a half inches by eight and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter, so it's scored right in half. This is a sheet of just white cardstock. It measures four by five and a quarter. This is a piece of designer series paper. It's the Tidings of Christmas Bundle. This also measures four by five and a quarter. So far, so good. I should check my camera. Look at that, still getting along. Okay, this is where I was when things kind of went awry. A, a couple more steps. This is another piece of that designer series paper from the Tidings of Christmas Bundle. This overall size is the same size as the card finished side so it's four and a quarter by five and a half and what I did is I went into my trimmer and on the reverse side this is the side that's going to be hidden I did not score it at a quarter of an inch nor did I score it at half of an inch I scored it directly between the two so six sixteenths of an inch and that's my score line I like to fold that then because orientation is everything after that now this is where I want to increase it so I can really show you. So bear with me. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, see, you're getting that glare. I'm trying to reduce that glare as much as possible. But let's just zoom in. Oh, that's, you're going to see it. We'll zoom in as close as I can get to where you can see on this side. Okay, on the trimmer, there's a little well. And this well is where the cutting blade or the scoring blade goes into. Getting up close, just kind of line your paper up as close to that as you can. And I want you to put a mark at two and a half and a mark at two and three quarters inches. Okay. Hopefully this, you can see this. Then we're going to come back over here to our, the well. And I want you to line up that first score mark to where it's directly above the well. Then you're going to rotate your paper and just past just to a little bit to the right of where that score was. Can you see that? You wanna leave it there, close it up, and we're gonna score it again. Now you didn't have a chance for me to tell you this part because that video got scratched. Don't push too hard on this scoring thing. A couple of gentle ones is better than a firm one. You push too hard, you will tear your paper. So that's the first score mark, and I'm kind of feeling, yep, I have it. Then going over to this mark that we made at two and three quarters, put that in the well right over top the well, not really in the well. And we're gonna twist our paper to where this bottom part where the curve ends, not the curve ends, the crease ends. We're gonna put that over top the well and we're gonna push it gently. Okay, now if everything worked out right, we should be able to continue on. Let me hold this up so you can see it. So again, we have this fold here and then the two score, the two tick marks and then the score ones. Let's go ahead and back this out just a little. 
That's the wrong way, Teresa. There we go. I think that's good. Okay. Now I just want to fold where I made those score lines. That's the beauty of those folds. They do the job for you. You don't have to worry so much. Of course, if you don't have the trimmer, you could do this by hand, but that would be a bit tricky. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put everything together and we're gonna talk just a quick second about this. This long edge, because my is going to go against this. You could hook it that way and adhere it to the back side. I've done that. I didn't quite like it as much as if I adhere it to the inside. Now, of course, the problem, and this is illustrated beautifully, if I do it this way, you're gonna see a little bit of that underside of paper. So let's trim that off. Just go in at an angle. And again, angle those little corner pieces off. I'm going to adhere this down first. You want a nice, sturdy tape. This is a tear and strip tape, and I'm going to just put it inside here to start. Okay, if you have that pick tool, comes in handy. Let me grab it. Especially if you have a hard time getting your nail underneath there to pull it off, this does come in handy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put that in place. Now, repositioning it again. I know it's gonna be that way. I'm doing this because I wanna tell you what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold up from the bottom first, okay? And you wanna adhere that. I have a nice big glue dot that I'm going to use. All right? These are some strong glue dots, which is good. You want it strong, you want it to stay. They're so strong, you can have a hard time getting the backing off. Oh, come on. Like I said, this is probably, this is my fourth time at least trying to get this video filmed for you. So keep checking to make sure the thing that supports the camera is in place, okay? So the reason we wanted that folded first is this one's going to come down. And so when the card comes in and out, it's not gonna catch on anything. So let's go ahead and get another one of these industrial strength glue dots <laughs> and adhere that, okay? Get your adhesive that you use on this card, make sure you get the best adhesives you can get your hands on because you don't want it to fall apart, okay? I feel like a carpenter. Measure twice, two, three times, cut once. We're going to put a strip of this tear and strip along the long side and the bottom edge. So let's do this long side first. Get it as close to that edge as you can go. This paper being lined actually is a little helpful, not gonna lie. I find that to be a bit helpful. Okay, you may have memorized which side was the bottom portion, but we're going to double check anyway. So that's where it's going to line up. So I know that I need to put the tear and strip down along this edge. Stay as close to the edge as you can get. I'm going to try to get this to line right up with that other piece of tear and strip. Okay. Whew, good stuff. And press that down. You can just use the back of your nail. And let's go ahead and use our pick tool and we're gonna remove both of these. Put that up out of the way. There we go. Now for this part, because paper can have a little bit of a bend in it and you don't want anything bending when you're applying this, we're going to take it and we're going to put down the outside edge first. And again, this is why your the quality of your adhesive is so important because we definitely want that to stay. And then just like when you apply wallpaper, you know, you go slowly so you don't get any air bubbles. Well, I'm going a little slowly because I want to make sure that the paper beneath it is flat as well. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and remove this sheet of white cardstock. Isn't that pretty? But we're not done. I have the leaves of Holly set and I really like it and I'm trying to get the most I can out of it, you know, as much usage. And so I took the die this pretty one right here, and I cut out a piece of the evening evergreen. See? Then, let me go ahead and put that away. 
I took one of these little leaves and using some soft succulent because it coordinates, I cut out, I thought I cut out four. Oh, I did. One, two, three, and there's another one hiding over here. That's fine. Let me get them. Come on. There we go. And the last thing I did is I stamped a greeting and I used some real red ink. And I used the stem, the sentiment from here, from our home to yours. And I cut it out using the die that's a part of this set. Look how much mileage you get out of this. Now, of course, you can do use um, additional embellishments to your choice, and I'm probably going to put some pearls on here. But let's talk this through. A lot of times you'll see this this way. And the reason I don't want it that way is I don't want anything interfering with putting that gift card in. So I'm going to apply it this way. But I'm also careful that this fold line, see, will continue here. So I don't want to put any adhesive along there. So I turn it over. I know I don't want to do that. I'm going to grab my stamp and seal plus and i'm just going to put down some stamp and seal plus i want to get some along that edge as well and then oh look some of that came through let me see if i can push that back because i don't want anything to stick to it when the card's closed there we go have you ever had that happen a little bit of your stamp and seal comes through and then your card gets stuck to your envelope or something like that, or another card. I have to pick this up because I want to make sure I get it nice and even. I'm going to line it up with the edge of that DSP, and it looks like it's just a flap that's created from the base card stock. Okay. So far, so good. I like it. I could raise this sentiment up on Stampin' Dimensionals, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me, but before I do, um, I want to put down some, I'm going to put down a little bit more of the Stamp and Seal Plus because I want to add some of these in here. And working with threes, because I know it's going to kind of go there. So I eyeball a lot. You all know that. It works for me. I think I'm going to do that one there and then just grab this one. I thought about putting some of the gold shimmer in here, but I decided against it. This is just going to go just enough to pick that up. Boom. Come on, get your last one. There we go. I might reposition that a little. Okay. And then I think what I'm going to do is position this dimensional right over top of that. And am I going to overdo it? You betcha I am. I'm going to put three on here. Uh, show am you called it whoever said that hey i want to say thank you to everyone who has taken the time to subscribe to our channel my husband and i so appreciate it i really like sharing this with you guys and we're close to hitting 500 subscribers which was our goal to hit 500 for 2022 as of recording this we have not made that yet but we're super close so for everyone who's subscribed thank you so much for everyone who's watching who hasn't subscribed, if you do, please know that it is greatly appreciated. And if you leave a comment, we'd like to welcome you. I want to put a little bit more bling on here. Which ones am I going for? You got it. You know it. I still have some more of these red and green. Don't worry. I think I have another pack um, over there in the cabinet. This time, I'm actually going to get some of the red berries. And for some reason, not for some reason, I'm just tickled to do it in threes. So let's try to put that in the corner. Yeah, so it looks like a cluster of berries. And I'm going to put that into the into the greenery. And then we're going to put this one. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not where I want you. Come on. Sometimes they just have a mind of their own. That's where I want you to go. And there we go. How does that look? What do you think? Oh, we want to try it with the card. Of course, again, I'm going to cover up the name of that place. You may know it, but I don't want to fully show it. But see, it's nice and secure in there. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. See? It's not going anywhere. It's nice and firm. And of course, inside, write your greeting. But isn't that cute? And you can see it's super important to get a good quality adhesive there. But lovely, isn't it? Oh, I like it. I'm so tickled with it. Let me bring another one into shot. That was, and let me, you know what? That's the star of the show. But I did do another one when I was playing with ideas. Look at this one. Same set of 
um, designer series paper. This one's, these are from the Tidings of Christmas. This one came from the Bow, Bow, Bows of Holly. Let me go ahead and position all this up so you can take a screenshot. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, subscribed, what is that? If you have not subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. We definitely appreciate it. Let me, come on, Teresa. I wanna get, you know, let me tuck that a little bit more so we're not 100% certain. Remember, that's the gift card. I'm gonna leave that in there so you can remember why you did this. There you go, go ahead and screenshot it. Anyhow, thanks for stopping by and remember, till next time, happy stamping.